Welcome friends to this uh, week 4 of this uh, uh, course that is soil science and technology and in this week we will be covering different uh, aspects of uh, soil water, we will be covering the flow of liquid water into the soil and different uh, measurement of soil water and uh, we will also cover layer soil and then soil temperature and different related uh, numerical problems. So, uh, in this first lecture we will start the flow of liquid water into the soil and we will try to finish it and uh, this flow of liquid water into the soil and then uh, we will go to the next topic of soil water that is uh, different. Uh, different uh, different uh, content different you know gravitational water what is the plant available water and then what is bulk uh, what is fill capacity what is uh, permanent wilting point we'll cover in the next lecture also so let us start with this uh, flow of liquid water into the soil and uh, in this uh, lecture we'll be basically covering different saturated and unsaturated flow and uh, vapor movement within the soil. So, uh, and there are different aspects. So, uh, water movement within the soil can be of three types. One, the first one is saturated flow, the second one is unsaturated flow and the third one is vapor movement. Now, in case of saturated flow, the major characteristics of saturated flow is soil pores are basically com you know, completely filled. So, saturated flow occurs when soil pores are completely filled, unsaturated flow occurs when larger pores in the soils are filled with air, leaving only the smaller pores to hold and transmit water. So, this is the difference between saturated flow and unsaturated flow. And finally, another type of movement is called vapor movement. And vapor movement basically occurs due to vapor pressure differences developed in relatively dry soil. So, let us start with the saturated flow. So, saturated flow is basically at least part of the soil profile may be completely saturated. For occurring the saturated flow, a part of the soil profile may be completely saturated. All pores, both large and small pores, that, that means macro pores and micro pores, should be filled with completely filled with water. And the lower horizon of poorly drained soil are often saturated you must know that and remember that the portions of well drained soils above water restricting layers of clay are also saturated. So, again saturated flow occurs when you know soil profile is completely saturated, uh, part of the soil profile may be completely saturated and all the pores both micro pores and macro pores are filled with water and lower horizon of a poorly drained soils are often saturated whereas, the portion of well drained soils above water restricting layers of clay are also saturated. Now, saturated flow of water within the soil basically obeys a law, we call it Darcy's law. Now, the quantity of water according to Darcy's law, let us see the quantity of water per unit of time that is if we, if we, if we denote the quantity of water by Q and time as T. So, the quantity of water per unit of time that is Q by T that flows through a column of saturated soil can be expressed by Darcy's law that is Q by T equal to a multiplied by k sat and multiplied by delta psi over L. Now, you see there is a soil column in this picture okay. and the length of the soil column is L denoted by L and the cross section is basically A, this cross sectional area of the water column is A through which water flows. And the, uh, the potential at the top of the soil column is psi 1, whereas the potential at the bottom of the uh, 
bottom of the soil uh, column is psi 2. So, as you can see water is moving through this soil column and finally, it is uh, you know there is an outlet where water is uh, emitting at a rate of q by t. So, here uh, k sat in this equation k sat. So, we already know q is the quantity of water t is the time here a is the cross sectional area delta psi is basically the difference between potential at the two points. So, delta psi is basically the change in water potential between the ends of the column. So, uh, and a little length of the column. So, the K set is basically the saturated hydraulic conductivity, saturated hydraulic conductivity it is very much important uh, for different irrigation and other uh, soil water movement purposes also we will discuss. So, this is called Darcy's law. Let us see what is the implication of saturated uh, hydraulic conductivity. So, for a given column this K sat or saturated hydraulic conductivity is expressed in the unit of centimeter per second and basically it denotes the ease with which is a soil transmits water. Now, you know this term that is delta psi by L, it basically shows the amount of force or uh, the amount of force that driving the water. We call it sometimes the water potential gradient and in case of saturated flow it is termed as hydraulic gradient, it is very very important. And remember that this principle of water movement through these you know saturated soil columns also you know also the same principle also applies when the water potential gradient moves the water in a horizontal direction. So, this is a point to remember. So, let us see what is the practical implication. Now, in case of saturated water flow, this flux, this flux is basically q by t, q by t equal to, we call it flux of water. Now, this flux can be thought as a water flowing from a hose. When we are watering the garden through a hose, uh, the flux can be thought as the water flowing from that hose. Remember that the flux is the rate at which water is discharged by the hose, which is divided by the cross sectional area of the hose. So, flux is basically Q over A into T. So, it is the rate of water discharged by the hose by the cross sectional area of the hose. So, this is called the flux. Uh, so, this is the if, if we consider this is a uh, hose and obviously, this is a cross sectional area A. So, flux can be calculated as q o by uh, below q by A multiplied by t. So, let us see what are the important points to remember in case of saturated flow. Remember that, sorry. so remember that in case of saturated flow, saturated flow can occurs both downward, horizontal and upward direction. However, the rate of horizontal and upward flow is usually not similar than that of uh, you know uh, than that of a downward flow, because the force of gravity does not assist horizontal flow and also hinders the upward flow. So, because of this reason the rate of horizontal and upward flow is not equal to the rate of downward movement of water through a saturated water uh, saturated soil column. Now, if you see this picture I have shown here two example 
one is sandy loam soil another is clay soil in case of sandy loam soil you see the rapid downward movement of water through the saturated you know in case of saturated flow however these rapidity is quite less in the downward direction in case of clay loam soil which is more fine textured soil however their horizontal movement is quite high than that of this sandy loam soil which is coarse textured soil so depending on the textural classes also the direction of saturated flow also differs so so what are the important factors that affect the saturated hydraulic conductivity first of all the macro pores the macro pores are you know those pores we have already discussed this macro pores macro pores are those pores which are having a you know radius of greater than 0.08 mm now these macro pores account for nearly all water movement in saturated soils and remember that sandy soils you know so this this uh, you know i you know again let me tell that these macro pores account for nearly all the water movement in case of saturated soil so this can be you know more you know evident from uh, from this table where you can see the number of macro pores in three slice classes their proportion of soil porosity and their contribution to total water flow in an irrigated maize field you can see that most of the flow took place through the largest class of pores that is large macro pores and there are other uh, smaller pores we call them small macro pores and you can see percentage of flow 88 percentage of flow is accounted by these large macro pores so these results also supports the idea that nearly all water movement in the saturated soil occurs through uh, macro pores now sandy soil generally have higher saturated uh, conductivity than fine textured soil because obviously in case of sandy soil the number of macro pores are quite high and air trapped in rapidly wetted soil can block pore and thereby reduce the hydraulic conductivity so this is also very important in case of uh, uh, you know macro pores so what are the important aspects so another important macro pore is called bio pores we have already covered bio pores in our previous lectures so another important type of macro pores are bio pores and bio we have already learned about bio pores in our previous lecture now bio pores are generally having a radius of greater than 1 mm and you know that uh, these bio pores are basically root channels and earthworm you know created through root channels and earthworm burrows and uh, uh, these bio pores help in saturated water flow and also it affects the water uh, you know uh, saturated you know water you know hydraulic conductivity so if you consider perennial grasses so in the perennial grasses are responsible for creating a network of stable bio pores so obviously uh, the saturated hydraulic conductivity in case of uh, soil which supports the perennial you know which supports the perennial grass will be much higher than that of in, you know with than that of soil which is maintained under annual crop plants because for growing the annual crop plants you have to uproot all the perennial grasses and as a result you are breaking down all the uh, bio pores also so once you are breaking down the bio pores obviously the saturated hydraulic conductivity is going further down so again in case of soil which is maintained under perennial grass the saturated bio uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity is quite higher than that of you know the soil which is cultivated with annual crop plant and uh, that is the reason that uh, the saturated hydraulic conductivity is higher in no tillage condition than that of conventional tillage so this is another advantage of using uh, conservation tillage or in other words no tillage than that of conventional tillage so uh, let us see what are the other factors affecting uh, saturated hydraulic conductivity so saturated hydraulic conductivity let us see 
such a, you know, uh, there is another important term called preferential flow. So, I have shown here two, two pictures. In the first picture, what happened? There is a, you know, there is a contaminant, uh, you know, there is a deposition of contaminants into the soil or uh, uh, there is a spillage of contaminant into the soil. And uh, it is generally thought that this contaminant will take time to reach into the water table which is far below the soil. However, the macro pores it has been found after certain period of time that these contaminants has been already le leached or already you know already reached the water table and contaminating you know and you can see the contaminate plume in the ground water. And these occurs because of vertical cracks and channels in the clay soil. So, macro pores with continuity from the soil surface down through the profile encourages the preferential flow. So, this is also very important. If there is a flash of rainfall, obviously that will help in movement of contaminant through the soil and ultimately it reaches into the groundwater to contaminate the groundwater. Preferential flow is very much important which also affects the saturated, uh, you know, saturated hydraulic conductivity. Another important uh, term is called finger flow. Now, finger flow is as you can see in this picture in very sandy soil hydrophobic organic coatings on sand grains repel water because you know when there is a hydrophobic it will repel the water and when there is a hydrophilic it will attract water. So, hydrophobic organic coatings are there in case of very sandy soil with the sand. So, as a result of this hydrophobic coating, it will prevent the soaking of uh, prevent the prevent the soaking of soil uh, by water uniformly. And where these coatings are absent or weighed off, water rapidly enters and produces fingers of rapid wetting. So, you can see in this picture obviously, this is a very sandy soil and this sandy soil may contain some uh, uh, hydrophobic hydrophobic compounds and these hydrophobic compounds are present in all over the places and these hydrophobic compounds will basically prevent uh, they may be present here they may be present here so all these hydrophobic compounds are prevent basically or repel the water uh, repel water so preventing the from soaking it uniformly otherwise it would be it would, it would have been uh, uniformly soaked so, where these coatings are absent or weighed off, water rapidly enters. So, you can see in this area, these coatings are weighed off. So, water is rapidly moving through these finger like zones. So, this is called finger flow of water. So, this is also very much important. So, let us see about unsaturated flow. Now, remember that unsaturated flow is more common than that of saturated flow and it is complicated than that of saturated flow. Remember, in case of saturated flow, it occurs when macro pores, both macro pores and micro pores are filled with water. However, in case of unsaturated flow, macro pores are filled with air and micro pores helps in water movement. And remember that these, in case of unsaturated flow, the water content and potential are variable. So, as you, as you can see, in case of saturated flow, the potential is 0. So, the both the macro pores and micro pores are filled with water and in case of unsaturated flow, when there is a less or negative uh, potential, all the macro pores will be drained and only the water will flow through these micro pores. So, this is an example of unsaturated flow and this is very important. Uh, from the point of view of soil water movement. So, this unsaturated flow occurs due to potential difference and in case of unsaturated flow, remember the driving force is metric potential instead of gravitational potential. So, in case of unsaturated flow, you remember that we are calculating this, uh, uh, you know, hydraulic gradient uh, where this length is, uh, you know, 
uh, very much important. However, in case of uh, unsaturated flow, this battery potential is very much important than that of a gravitational potential. And battery potential gradient is the difference in the battery potential of the moist soil areas and nearby dry areas into which the water is moving. So, water will always move from higher metric potential to lower metric potential. Lower metric potential means the attraction for water from the soil matrix is quite high. So, water will move from higher metric potential to lower metric potential areas in case of unsaturated flow. And movement will be from a zone of thick moisture film, obviously, higher metric potential, example minus 1 kilopascal to 1 thin films, uh, to 1 of thin films that is lower metric potential that is minus 100 kilopascal. So, uh, this slide shows the influence of uh, texture as you can see we have plotted here the metric potential in the log scale in the x axis and the y axis there is hydraulic conductivity. So, you can see that there is relationship is to be expected uh, because you can see at, a, at higher metric potential or uh, I would say at higher metric potential means high water content obviously the hydraulic conductivity is quite high in case of sandy soil than that of a clay soil and the trend uh, you know alters and the trend reverses when the metric potential is quite low that is low moisture content. So, this relationship is to be is quite uh, you know expected because in sandy soil contains many large pores that are water filled when the soil water potential is high and the soil is quite wet. But most of these have been emptied by the time the soil water potential becomes lower that means in this zone. So, when the soil water potential lowered down from 0 to minus 100 kilo Pascal obviously, uh, you know these larger macro pores will empty it first leaving only the micro pores which are present in, in clay soil. So, the clay soil has many more micro pores that are still water filled at lower water potential at this point. So, in the drier soil condition and in this condition they can participate in unsaturated flow. So, you can see at, at lower metric potential or in other words in lower moisture content these clay soil are taking part you know are, are mostly important for unsaturated flow of soil water. Another important term is infiltration and percolation. Now, infiltration is the process by which water enters in the soil, water enters the soil pore space and become soil water and the rate at which the water can enter into the soil is termed as infiltrability and we generally term this as small i and remember the form the the unit of infiltrability is uh, meter per second. So, infiltrability is basically expressed in this term. So, i equal to q over a into t where q is the volume of quantity volume and quantity of water in cubic meter infiltrating a is the area of the soil surface in square meter exposed to infiltration and t is time in second. So, uh, infiltration is a transitional phenomena remember that infiltration is a transitional phenomena that takes place at the soil surface and remember that was the water has infiltrated into the soil the soil water moves down downward into the profile by the process term as percolation. So, you can see in this picture this is the soil surface. So, when there is an infiltration obviously, it will be a surface phenomena water will enter into the soil and once water will enter into the soil it will move down to the soil profile and this movement of water in the soil profile is termed as percolation. It is also very much important and uh, so this is the difference between percolation and infiltration. The last type of water movement is called water vapor movement and water vapor movement can be of two types. One is internal which occurs within the soil, another is external which occurs at the land surface or we call it surface evap evaporation also. So, uh, the water vapor movement basically occurs due to three major driving force. The first one is vapor pressure gradient that is uh, vapor pressure gradient that means, uh, the, the vapor will move from the higher moisture to lower moisture zone. Obviously, 
where the moisture content is high obviously the vapor pressure will be high and where the moisture content is low vapor pressure also will be low so vapor will always move from higher moisture content zone to lower moisture content zone, lower moisture zone within a soil and low soil to high soil content and low soil to high soil content or in other words it is low fertilizer to high fertilizer content because where there will be low fertilizer content there will be higher vapor pressure where as compared to where there will be high fertilizer content there will be low vapor pressure. So, water will move from low salt or fertilizer content to high salt or fertilizer content and thirdly is water will always move from uh, according along with the temperature gradient that is from high uh, temperature zone to low temperature zone. So, you can see this picture also it has been evident. So, in the first picture uh, you know net water movement is basically nullified by uh, you know opposite direction of this temperature gradient and uh, moisture gradient and here the net water movement is quite high because in both the uh, you know temperature gradient as well as moisture gradient acting in a same, same direction and finally, so the water vapor will move from uh, move, uh, water vapor uh, will move upward here and water vapor movement towards fertilizer salts is giving you know showing in here. So, in the Africa the these are small moist soak uh, pits where you know uh, farmers are applying the fertilizers and as a result water vapor will move from uh, you know the surrounding areas to this to this uh, high fertilizer content area to further uh, you know influence the reaction. So, this is how the water vapor movement occurs into the soil and uh, I hope that uh, you have got a basic idea about different types of saturated flow and saturated flow and water vapor movement. And, uh, so, let us uh, wrap up here and, uh, and in the next lecture we will start uh, a new aspect of soil water. Thank you very much.